Welcome to a new coding challenge, maze generation. So I've got a maze generator running behind me. It's using something called a depth first search and a recursive backtracker. Those are all very fancy sounding names. And what I'm gonna do in this challenge, probably in multiple parts, so it'll be two or three videos you can follow along in sequence, is build this simulation entirely from scratch. And it will cover a lot of concepts in object-oriented programming, thinking about arrays, thinking about something called a stack, thinking about recursion, all sorts of crazy stuff. So, um, so without further ado, so to speak, let's just get started. Ah, no, actually, there is some ado here. So this is the, a version of it running that I built a while ago, meaning earlier this morning. And I just wanna show you where this comes from. Uh, all this will be linked to the source code for this, and this Wikipedia page will be linked to in the description. Um, this is a Wikipedia page on maze generation. There's a lot of different algorithms if I were to just keep scrolling. I'm implementing this depth first search, and I'm actually going to implement exactly this pseudocode, which is written right here under a recursive backtracker. But if you keep scrolling down, you'll see there's various other algorithms, and maybe we'll come back, and in future videos, if you like this topic, do more of them. So this is what I want to focus on. Now, before I can even focus on really getting to the algorithm, I need to kind of like set the scene of like, what is it that we're building? So I'm going to come over here to the whiteboard. And what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a canvas. So I'm going to build this on a web page in a browser using HTML5 Canvas, using P5.js. And I'm also using an Atom as my text editor, some tools that I'm using here. But what I ultimately need is I need to think of this canvas as a grid. And each spot on that grid is a cell object. And essentially, what the program is going to do is it's going to figure out what walls should be removed to make a nice maze pattern. And you can sort of see what I'm doing here. If I remove certain walls, you could see now, ah, here is sort of a maze that you want to follow. So before I can, and there's going to be a strategy for like, why do we remove certain walls to create a continuous maze, a continuous labyrinth. But the first thing I knew before I could do any of that is just sort of set myself up with some kind of data structures to figure out how to do this in the first place. So what I need is a cell object. The cell object should know where it is in this grid. It should know what column it's in and what row it's in. So every one of these spots has like a column number. 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, and a row number, 0, 1, 2, or 3. So the cell needs to know where it is, and it also needs to know, like, what's the deal with its walls? <laughs> Does it have, is the wall to the right open or closed? Is the wall to the top open or closed? To the left open or closed? To the bottom open or closed? So I'm, let's go and build this cell object, and I'm going to use a constructor function. So I'm back over here. This is, uh, so I'm going to, uh, this is still running. We'll let that run. I'm going to come over here. This is my blank canvas with nothing in it yet. I'm going to go to my code editor. I'm using Atom, and I've set up just create canvas and background. So in this first video, all I'm going to do is get the, the grid there. So the first thing I want to do is write a constructor function for uh, a cell object. So, oops. So you can see, and I want to put some line breaks down here at the bottom. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a cell object that has an I and a J. The I being its column number, the J being its row number. So actually, let's think about how do we even know what, how many columns and rows there are. So I want to have some global variables. I'm going to call those columns and rows. And I also want to have another variable, which is the size. I really need a variable which Gives, keeps track of like how wide and high, how, how big is this square? It's going to be a square, not a rectangle. Same height, same. So I can have a single, a single variable. I'm just going to call that variable w. And let's just say that variable is 40. So right, I have a canvas that's 400 by 400, and the width and height of each square is 40. So it's 10 rows and 10, col or 10 columns and 10 rows. It's an easy way of thinking of it first. And how do we calculate that? We say column equals width divided by w, that's the total number of columns, the width divided by how big each one is. The rows equals the height divided by how big each one is. And I should also use the floor function to make sure I'm dealing with integers here, whole numbers, even though I know that 400 divided by 40 is the whole number 10. But what if I have a different size canvas? And that'll just make things easier. So now that I have that, I have a cell object. Each cell gets its i and j. Gets its, look, gets its column and row. Okay, so how do I create all the cell objects? Well, I want to say 
for every row for every row go through every column so the first row creates cell create all these cells the next row create all these cells the next row create all these cells that means I need a nested loop so for I goes through all the rows and you know what I like to call J, I'm thinking of J as the rows, so I'm going to change that to J. And I could use the X and Y, that might even make things easier. But I'm used to I and J as my sort of names of things. So, um, so, it, so it, it kind of makes sense in my brain immediately. <laughs> you know, use your, whatever variables make you feel comfortable about columns and rows, that's what you should use. Maybe you can use cat and kitten or something. But anyway, and then I want to say, I want to make a cell is a new cell at I, J. So this now is a nested loop that's going to make 100 cell objects, right? 10 by 10 grid, every, for every column, every row, make 100 cell objects, make them each know where they are. Now, where do I put those? What I want, what I need is an array. So I need an array, and I could use a two-dimensional array, and I, two-dimensional arrays in JavaScript, First of all, there's not really any such thing as a two-dimensional array. It's really just an array, and the things in the array are other arrays. That's a two-dimensional array. But, and there's some conveniences for doing that, but uh, um, I think it's going to be simpler, actually, if I use a one-dimensional array, and we'll sort of talk about why and, and see some pieces of that as I keep going. Okay, so I have a one-dimensional array, right? This list is going to store all the cell objects, and I'm going to say grid.pushcell. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying make all of these cell objects and put them into this big array. Once I have that, in draw, I could actually then loop through all of them and display them. I'm going to call a function called show. So what this means is, what I want to do now is just see that this is working. And so what am I going to do in this cells, in the, what I need now is a new function called show in the cell object. So I can add that here, this.cell, uh, sorry, this.show equals a function, and here I want to draw something. So where is the x coordinate for this particular cell? Well, it's at the i location, it's column location times w, right? Because it's column 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, scaled up by how big those squares are. x is this.j times w. And then, so I could just draw a rectangle at x, y at that size, and I could say stroke 255, no fill. And now if I run this, we should see, ah, okay, so what did I miss? Cells is not defined, sketch.js line 25. Okay, so the array, I called it grid, not cells. Whoops, I wonder why grid is, uh, oh, and this should be grid also. Uh, okay, so that should fix that. Great, so you can see now I have that grid there. Now, we should dig a little bit deeper here because the whole point of doing this was not to draw rectangles here, but each cell has walls. It has four walls, a top, a right, a bottom, and a left. So I should be either draw, the walls should either be there or they shouldn't there, be there. So I need to draw them as individual lines. So let's figure out how I would do that. So here where I'm drawing, instead of drawing a rectangle, I want to draw the walls. So to draw the wall, I'm just going to use line. So we can get rid of the rectangle. I might want this later, so I'm going to leave that commented out. I'm going to say line what? X, x comma y, x plus w comma y. What's that going to give me? So you can see here that that gives me a line from the top left to the top right of each cell. Now, I could also draw from x comma y plus w to x comma y plus w, no, 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 <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, x plus w, okay, okay, okay. Let's go to the whiteboard here because this will be easier to figure out if I do this here, okay? So what's going on? Each cell, this location is x, y. This location is x plus w comma y. This location is x plus w, y plus w, and this location is x, comma y plus w. I think I got all those right. So I need to draw a line from here to here, a line from here to here, a line from here to here, and a line from here to here. Let's do that. 
So that should be, and I, I can refer, I can look back, you know, you can kind of imagine that that's there, but I'm looking back at it and I'm saying the next line is x plus w, oops, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, x plus w, comma y to x plus w, y plus w, and then I need x plus w comma y plus w, and there's an extra, boy, it's all doing all sorts of autocomplete stuff for me. I'm gonna have to work that out in this editor. Uh, so to uh, x comma y plus w, oh boy, we're gonna get this eventually, and then x, y plus w, back to x, y. So now if I run this, we can see, ah, it looks just like it did before, but let's just sort of make sure things are working here. Like what if I take out this particular line Actually, it doesn't look any different because if I take out the right side, the left side of the cell next to it always picks it up. <laughs> but if I take out both, both sides, we just see only the, uh, oh, the top and the bottom, we only see the, uh, the horizontal lines. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, okay. So, okay, <laughs> I'm getting somewhere, but I, I gotta think about this. One thing I wanna do, this is me being like the anal, anybody see the Saturday Night Live sketch, Anal Retentive Chef? where like the garbage goes in the Ziploc bag and then that gets like, and then the Ziploc bag goes in the, plastic, the paper bag and the paper bag gets folded and gets taped. Well, I am the anal retentive coder and what I wanna do is just like align all of this so I can kind of like see this more easily, what's going on. Uh, and this is bothering me because I want spaces here. <laughs> so you should, you should now turn this video to two times speed while I'm doing this and then go back. But this I think is useful to be able to see exactly what's going on. And I will do this periodically. And this needs a space. Boy, what is, go oh, I have just lost my mind here. Uh, and this needs a space. Oh, you know one thing I need is uh, auto format. I'm gonna, when I take a break to go to the next video, so we'll edit this part out. Okay, so, oh, oh, and I need some spaces here. This is really, I really have, you should not be like me. Be like some, don't have this kind of problem. <laughs> be fine with the spacing and everything not being exactly right. You know, indentation is important, but at some point in your life, you just need to like write your code. Anyway, the reason why I did this is I want to see like, okay, I want to see clearly like this is the X coordinate, this is the Y, this is the X. So I wanted everything to line up nicely. Okay, now. How am I going to figure out a way? I need something else for these cells. I need you to figure out a way to know, does it have a wall on any of these sides? So what I'm going to do, this is going to be a little bit strange, I think a way of doing this is to create Boolean variables. So I have a Boolean variable for the top, for the right, for the bottom, and for the left. Top, right, bottom, left. Are, are there walls? Um, are, are, does the wall exist for this particular cell? So let's, let's look at how I might do that. So each cell, and honestly, I think what would be easier would be to say this dot walls equals true, comma, true, comma, true, comma, true. So I'm creating an array. So each cell, when it starts, every wall is there. True, 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 true. So it's up to me to memorize. Let's all memorize this together. Top, right, bottom, left, top, right, bottom, left. Say it with me, top, right, bottom, left, okay? That's gonna be the order. Did I get it right here? Top, right, bottom, left. I think that's the right order. X to X plus W, Y to Y plus W, X plus W to X, Y plus W to Y. I'm pretty sure I got that right. So what I can say here now is if walls index zero, then draw this line and I'm gonna repeat this a bunch of times. And put in, uh, I bet you there's a key command. This is the first time I've ever used Atom. <laughs> uh, I bet you there's a key command to auto format it. And one, and two, and three. Now I'm sure some of you could come up with like a case statement or you wouldn't need the curly brackets, but I'm trying to be as explicit as possible. So these are the lines I'm gonna draw if the wall exists. So you can see here, I hit refresh, ooh, walls is not defined. So what, of course I made the mistake that I always make, which this needs to say this dot walls in all of these. And you can see there it is. Now if I change this to false, 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 top, middle, right, wait, top, right, bottom, left. 
Sorry, I forgot. Top, right, bottom, left. We should only see the left lines. And you can see those are all the left lines. Um, so and we can be sure about, so, so you can see at some point I'm going to be able to change these Boolean variables from true or false to add and remove walls based on how that labyrinth should look. Okay, so I think I've actually, this, this concludes this first video where essentially all I've done is set up a grid, a two-dimensional array. Ah, it's a one-dimensional array. <laughs> and it has a bunch of cells that live on a grid, each with an I and a J. Each cell is drawn as four lines, top, right, bottom, left. I don't, I probably said something totally wrong before because I think I was saying middle. There's no middle. Top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. And uh, I also have a mechanism, an array that has Booleans in it to know whether top is right is true, right is true, bottom is true, left is true, if those lines should be there or not. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to look at the algorithm and see how we start to start from one of those cells and decide whether to remove a wall or not. And that will start us with actually the maze creation itself.